Sometimes in home routing situations, you have a router at home. Which what your router is doing, in addition to just routing, it's taking the internal IP addresses and it is using the network address translation to map them into external IP addresses. And the external IP address basically allows it to route across the internet, where the, inner, the internal IP address is not internet routable. So we're going to use Linux boxes to do the same thing. So this machine, the server machine, has two IP addresses, or two network interfaces. And so I can go in and I can configure these. So I am going to do my settings. Um, if we go in the network configuration, you have two devices. One's ENS32 and one is ENS34. ENS32 is going to be my outside interface. It has no IP addresses right now, but I'm going to go configure it. So I change it to a manual address, and it's 10.230.151.123. And it has a network mask of 255.255.00. And it has a gateway of 10.230.0.1. So I apply that and then go to the other interface, ENS34, which is my internal interface, and configure this one. And it has, we're going to make it uh, 192.168.0.1 with a net mask of 255.255.255.0. And it's gateway, we're going to leave that blank and see if it allows that, and which applies. All right, turn the interface off, back on again, so it takes the IP address. Same thing with the other interface. It seems like it's already activated, so we're good. All right, now this machine, I should be able to close this, and I should be able to ping Google now. And it pings OK. All right, so my internal IP address is 10. Dot, it's actually 192.168.0.1. Now if I look at IP ADDR, I can see this right here, ENS32 is my external, and ENS34 is my internal. Now I'm going to have a client machine configured, and this one is going to be um, configured to be on the inside. So it needs to have an IP address on the inside. And the inside IP addresses were the 192.168.0 range. So the 192.168.0. And I pick some number in here, 23. Should be good. With a network mask of 255.255.255.0. And as gateway is going to be the IP address of the server. So the 192.168.0.1. I apply that, turn the interface off, back on again, and then we are ready to go. Now, if this machine tried pinging Google, it would not be able to ping Google right now because it'd have to go through its default gateway to get there. If it tried doing some kind of a trace route thing, uh, I don't know if the trace route's on here. Trace route um, 8.8.8.8. It would see that you cannot get through because <clears throat> all it does is it hits the gateway and the gateway just drops it right there. That's it. It's over. Okay. So now we need to configure the gateway to allow routing through. And then we need to configure network address translation. So let's start with the configuring the routing. In the kernel, there you can add, you can access the kernel with the proc directory, proc, and then in proc, there is this uh, sys, sys directory. Take a look around, and you can see there's all these different things. If I go into net, look around, I can see that see there is an IPv4. So IPv4. 
four. And I look around and I see there's a bunch of files in here. And I cat out the IP forward file. The IP forward has the value set to one. So apparently it is already set to allow routing through. However, it's not doing NAT. So if we wanted to make sure that it was set, sometimes it's set to zero, we can set that by just doing echo one to our IP forward. forward. And that would be enough to do it. Um, if you look at the directory or where we're at, we're inside of proxys net IPv4 and the file we're looking at is IP forward. So what we want to do is set it up so the net IPv4 IP forward is set to point to the correct location. So if we go to the etc directory, there is a file sysctl.com. So I edit this file and I can tell it the location. So if it's a net.ipv4.ip forward, we want to make sure it's set to one. This thing right here, just putting that line in the file makes it so that when the machine starts up, it will automatically set the value in the kernel to allow IP forwarding on IPv4. So exit out. And I do sysctl minus p, and it goes and heads and sets the net IPv4, IP forward value to one. But it was already set to one, so it must be getting set somewhere else. Either way, now it's set, we know it's set, and we know it'll work. All right, now we have a firewall we have to work with. If we do a firewall um, CMD, we can add a direct rule to um, allow um, the machine to work as a NAT device. So you add rule IPv4 NAT, and it's going to be post routing. That means before, means after the routing happened, and we're going to redirect. Or we're going to we're going to indicate that the ENS thirty two device, whatever gets sent to that is going to for NAT is going to be sent to the masquerade. Great. All right. So now it is configured to allow masquerade. Um, now we need to tell it uh, information about interfaces and, and allowing things to come in. <clears throat> so if things are going through the firewall, they're going through the forward filter. So, and we can also change this rule and also make it permanent. So just temporary, which might be better. Um, all right. We don't want to put the, uh, we want to make sure it goes to the correct rule instead of becoming some kind of masquerade permanent rule. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing um, or do something similar. We're going to do firewall. CMD, and we're going to add some rules to allow data to be across, go across without being blocked. So um, filter forward um, zero, and if it comes in <clears throat> on the ENS34 and goes to ENS32, so we're coming from the inside going out, then we are going to allow the packet by accepting it. And we also make, want to make this rule permanent so that in the future we can keep this file rule working. Now we also want to do the same thing going the coming in from the outside going in. So we'll just modify this a little bit. So if it was coming in on ENS 34, no, 
16 coming from the outside in 32. If we're going out, putting in as 34. That means it's coming from the outside going in. And we want to do M state. And we want to tell it that if it's in the state of related, um, establish, established, then we want to just go ahead and accept it. And we want to make this rule also permanent. All right, so now we have our nat masquerading turned on. We should still be able to ping Google because we could ping it before. And now we're going to see what the client does. The client tries pinging Google and it can ping Google and we use the trace route and we can see that it is going out the row machine and going out to the outside. You can stop that right there. So it goes out and then continues on. All right, and that is how you set up network masquerading for Linux boxes.